Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie of Grow Folds, and today we will be big box store plant shopping at Walmart to see if there's any updates. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Um, this is a Walmart I actually frequent often, and today I'm just going to see if they have any updates. Um, right over here, we have a bromeliad right in the display of the outdoor patio section. And I'm going to pan over here and show you this Philanopsis orchid end cap. Um, most of them are for $15.97. And I'm going to walk around here and take a look at some of their planters. So I know I've been featuring a lot of different indoor house plants, but I haven't been showing you guys a lot about the planters. And you can see that the Better Homes and Garden um, line that Walmart has has um, really elevated its modern aesthetic i really love the charcoal um, planters the gray neutral tones i really think that they would work well with a lot of plants as well as their pink planters they've got some rattan planters they've just got a lot of different planters for a different aesthetic but for the most part they are not only cost effective because i feel like the prices are not incredibly expensive but they are um, very nice and stylish planters but we're going to go ahead and walk around this corner you can see there's some planned accessories um, like gloves and some pruning shears but we can see that they have a bunch of different types of plants here mostly costa farms and you can see right off the bat we've got an alocasia ninja now this one is by growers bench for 1797 um, I love the Alocasia Ninja just because of the black velvety leaves and then just the veining as well. Now with Alocasias, you want to give them bright indirect light. Don't overwater them um, and make sure you have preventative um, pest control like spider mite control. This one right over here is an exotic angels um, plant. This one is a Palea Pan Am for $5.97. I actually bought one of these at... Um, actually not $5.97, these are for $4.97. I actually bought one of these actually at Lowe's. I have been collecting Palea plants. I think they're gorgeous. And then this one is another plant called the Golden Flame. I've seen this often for Costa Farms and Hanging Baskets, so that's just a smaller variety. Um, this is actually a Walmart that I saw for the first time before all of these plants started to get jumbled up they had a bunch of like philodendron pink princess a uh, philodendron white princess but you can see that there are some philodendron pink princess right over here this one has some pretty good variegation this one is for $24.97 by growers bench so again growers bench is a plant nursery um, that actually is like pretty much the rare varieties of wild interiors. Wild interiors typically sources to grocery stores, big box stores like Walmart and Home Depot and Lowe's. And this is actually a beautiful alocasia. This is an alocasia nebula. I um, first saw this at a different Walmart out in McKinney, Texas. Um, this one is just further down south. But what I like about this alocasia nebula is obviously how beautiful the leaves are, but also the stems. The stems actually have some like um, polka dots on it. And then it's just a beautiful looking plant. I actually like it more so than the alocasia silver dragon for some reason. I have yet to add this to my collection. Like I'm super tempted to buy this particular one, but I don't know if I really want to buy this just yet because I feel like all of these plants have been sitting out here in this Walmart for quite a while. So I don't know if the health is actually that great or if they'll get another restock. Speaking of alocasia, we do have an alocasia cupria. For some reason, I'm not as big of a fan of this alocasia um, cupria. I just feel like this um, plant right here, um, it's just a little bit more delicate. Like you can see that literally this plant has um, taken some abuse. It is about to fall over. I'm trying to repot, um, repot this plant because it's basically, um, the stem is basically ripped off of the soil. It is a beautiful looking alocasia. Um, it's an alocasia I most likely will add to my collection, but definitely not that one. You can see that it is just not looking that healthy. And then we have an alocasia pink dragon over there. I do like the leaf of it. I love dark foliage plants. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And then we have um, a bromeliad. And it's interesting that this bromeliad is actually on clearance for $10. There are several plants at this point I feel like that need to be clearanced out. Um, 
they just have so many indoor plants or just tropical plants bunched up. I remember going to this um, Walmart and I was really impressed because they had a lot of the plants just be very organized. But now I just feel like, you know, these plants are just kind of jumbled up. Like I remember seeing this um, philodendron white princess. I would say like a month ago and now which is kind of thrown around in this one as well. So that is the sad reality of some of these big box store um, plants. They end up just declining in health, although this Begonia Macalata for 1984 um, doesn't look bad. But um, just to go back with just the decline of like, you know, indoor house plants at big box stores, when you get them fresh from like a restock, they are super healthy. You know, when they just come out of the pallet, out of those boxes, they're super healthy. They're uh, merchandise well, but you can see like all of these plants have just been, um, you know, pretty much neglected to it a certain extent. And I don't want to sound negative when it comes to talking about big box stores, but like even this Dracaena marginata, it looks like it's been sitting out for a while and you can see that there is some yellowing on the leaves. Um, and then these majesty palms. So like these majesty palms are starting to yellow up as well. Um, this is still a fairly um, decent looking Alocasia Milo light. I love the leathery texture of the leaves, but as you can see, they've just got everything mixed from like bromeliad, sasego palm to Alocasia alocasias some more alocasias and um, anthuriums we've got a bunch of exotic angel um, costa farm plants um, just a bunch of their trays and then that alocasia ninja right over here we've got some philanopsis orchids um, i'm just gonna walk around and just kind of show you some more plants like this is a decent looking alocasia pink dragon it's um, still fairly healthy i love the pink stems there's a couple of dead leaves here but for the most part i would still um pay um full price for this one this one is for 17.97 um i love how the leaves get really large and then just the pink stems in general are gorgeous i already have this in my plant collection i'm trying to rehab one that i ended up getting for seven dollars so we'll see if it makes it through and then we've got some um some monstera perus right over here i am going to walk out in the outdoor section because costa farms actually has a bunch of um I would say like plants that are grown indoors like for instance this is for 584 this is a white bird of paradise so whenever you see those large bird of paradise plants at like lowe's home depot and even um, walmart you'll see them in the 20 dollars range but for 584 that is not bad and we've just got a bunch of like what a white bird of paradise now the care tips for this obviously is you want to give it as much bright indirect light i think in certain cases they can take full sun um it is definitely a plant that needs a lot of bright light um in florida they actually bloom but i would say in texas it's very difficult or just in indoor situations it's very difficult to get a white bird of paradise to bloom they do have different types of flowers this one particularly um, blooms white or that's what it is and it's interesting because these are also sourced out by costa farms and you know speaking of costa farms plants so we talk about cordyline cordyline or tea plants these ones are also um for 584 and these are in the island blooms um collection by costa farms so cordyline do better outdoors although for some reason they are marketed as an indoor plant it's interesting that they have these island bloom plants in the outdoor section because um, i've seen like cordyline or tea plants grown indoors the problem is they are very spider mite prone so if you grow them indoors for some reason they just end up getting spider mites kind of the same thing with hydra helix or hedera helix english ivies they actually end up just growing um you know getting spider mites indoors but um needless to say 584 is not bad for a um quarter line tea plant now if you give it bright and direct light the the foliage will get um even more pinks so i think that's really cool and then right over here we've got another dracaena this is for 584 as well this is a small um dracaena for this is a dracaena um marginata i like it just because when it does mature it will grow in size but also like cane up for 584 that is not a bad starter plant so i do like all of the dark foliage um, tropical plants at this um, Walmart it looks like they are starting to fill up their outdoor section you can see like the green and then the purple that's really beautiful and again for this Dracaena it doesn't really need bright indirect light it can tolerate lower light conditions 
Now look at this tea plant right here. This one is starting to pink up a little bit and get some more of that purple variegation. Um, I may grow tea plants outdoors this year, but they definitely never worked out for me indoors. Unfortunately, they just get spider mites unless you are literally spraying it down and inspecting it like every couple of days. I don't know what it is about certain plants getting um, being more susceptible to spider mites, but like English ivy and tea plants are considered um, plants that are very susceptible to it. And then right over here, we've got some um, hanging baskets of some type of tropical plant as well. Um, I do love the pink bloom. So I'm really excited. Um, my plant foldies, and if you're new to the channel, I call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies just because originally this um, channel was an origami ASMR channel that I have converted back to plants. So um, this one is a Mandiva pink. That's a nice looking bloom right here. I will assume that this plant is definitely going to need a lot of bright light, maybe even full sun, um, just because it is a tropical plant and it is blooming. I do like the leaves as well. I feel like that waxy tone, that shine looks really nice. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the um, care tips are for that. I will assume that it is going to need a lot of bright light or even full sun. So um, plant foldies or even my grow folds, um, community on the live premiere chats. Let me know what you guys think or what if you guys know the plant care tips. As always, I love learning from you as much as I like giving you guys my plant insights. It's just really exciting to be able to make like daily, you know, pretty much one hour videos of plant shopping or just plant content. I just love telling you guys my thoughts. When I create my um, plant shopping videos, I don't really have a script. I'm literally playing back the film that I um, took and just telling you my thoughts as I see the plants. But it is really nice to see 584 is not bad for um, this beautiful looking blooming plant and that's the thing about um, Walmart you can find a lot of plants that are you know aimed to be grown outdoors that you can grow indoors and I'll get more into that as the season comes but you could see how full this whole section is so it looks like um, you know when you see one Walmart getting restocked you can assume especially in the Dallas Fort Worth area so if you're new to the channel I am based in the North Dallas Fort Worth area you can see that a lot of the big box stores typically get restocked around the same time this is a big um, fern right here for $16.84 um, look at that and they have a lot of ferns right over here as well I don't have any ferns growing in my collection just because I feel like they require a little bit more humidity and right over here we have some um, hibiscus plants also sourced out by Costa Farms look at that beautiful bloom now these um, hibiscus are um, beautiful as well I actually ended up making a hibiscus bonsai at one point um, it just ended up dying just because we get very cold winters and it's just really hard to winterize hibiscus they definitely need a lot of full sun they definitely need full sun actually and um, for the most part they do grow well these are for 3474 these are braided um, hibiscus plants I actually ended up getting one of these braided like tree type looking hibiscus at Costco of all places in the Philippines, which is where I'm from originally and my family's from, um, these are called gomamela. And for some reason, I remember my grandmother getting like gomamela or flower, um, you know, hibiscus flowers and um, like smashing it with a rock and then mixing these mushed up flowers in like a soapy mixture to put uh, as like bubbles. I, I don't know, that seems random, but it's one of those things that remind me of my childhood. Like I was able to get like bubbles out of that. Um, blow bubbles out of that mixture and they use like the um, hibiscus bloom smashed up in some like soapy mixture I don't know if it just made the bubble stronger but that was one of my like early childhood memories that my grandmother did and that's the thing um, my love for plants actually comes from my grandmother she grows like vegetables outdoor plants indoor plants any kind of plants and she has such a green thumb um, I've learned a lot from her and you know it's one of those things that have really fueled my passion for plants and as you guys can see i'm just panning out on a lot of like flowering plants outdoor plants um we're getting a lot of bulbs like these hyacinths are to die for look at how beautiful these pink ones are these lavender hyacinths and they are perennial so the thing about it is 
they will pretty much return back every single season alongside tulips and daffodils um they grow from like tubes and bulbs so like that's one of those things where they can definitely winterize in the um very harsh winters that texas re receives especially the north dallas area but i love smelling the hyacinth blooms if you've never smelled hyacinth blooms they are so fragrant and just so vibrant in their colors i absolutely love them and they always remind me of animal crossing i say that on every single video i do when i show hyacinths if you've never played animal crossing new horizons which is on the nintendo switch um they have an option to grow different types of flowers and one of them would be hyacinths um and i just it just reminds me of that and actually these hyacinths are just I, they're gorgeous as well as these daffodils like look at this one these are a darker pink one um and walmart has them for a very good price i believe these are i'm mean, gonna let's try to switch around show you guys how much the price is i think it's like 7.94 something around that range no more than ten dollars for this plant and you can definitely plant them in containers or even in your outdoor landscape. Actually, it's even cheaper. $5.97 by Expert Gardener. Love that as well. So if you want to grow hyacinths, definitely get that. If I'm going to buy hyacinths, though, I would try to buy ones that are not fully bloomed yet, just because I would like um, them to last a little bit longer in the season. And then right over here, we have some daffodils in these planters. Love daffodils as well. I do like the, um, the look about them. They come in different varieties. And those were for $9.97. And then we have some more um, hyacinths right over here. These are some yellow hyacinths. These are for $1.48. Not bad at all. Um, actually, it'd be nice to like get a whole um, selection of them and maybe just plant them in the ground. I didn't really plan on growing a lot of outdoor plants. Last year, I kind of went overboard and planted a bunch of Japanese maples, azaleas, and things like that. But with the t um, the hot Texas summers, like ho over 100 degree weather for almost like a month straight, it just didn't do very well from my ma ma Japanese maples. Some of them didn't really make it past the year. So like, I'm gonna scale back a little bit on that but um, as you can just can see these are beautiful hyacinths right over here now my plant foldies and viewers have you guys grown hyacinths like long term in your gardens do you actually have outdoor gardens or are you mostly focused on indoor plants i am trying to diversify my plant content to not just only aeroids and house plants um, i want to get into like flowering plants garden plants fruit trees succulents you name it if it's a plant i'm going to try to cover it just because i want to um, diversify our plant foldies community and i did want to say shout out to all of the canadian plant foldies roll call if you are in the live premiere chat so let me know if you are from canada um it's just really interesting i've gotten a lot of like canadian viewers but i absolutely love it i hope that you guys end up getting as many plants as we have in the dallas fort worth area because surprisingly a lot of these tropical plants aside from being costa farms um sources um come from canada of all places so it's just really interesting that you guys are mentioning you don't have nearly as many plants available there are a lot of plants coming from canada but anyways let me get back onto the subject of actual plants at this big box store so a lot of these plants are for five, um, 597 or 997 i'm just i'm panning over a lot of these hyacinths because they do fascinate me and as i do more plant videos i will show you guys more hyacinths but you can see um walmart has a bunch of philanopsis orchids i'm just going to go back to this um this section with all of the um indoor house plants this one is the olympia false aralia i do like um aralias i have a balfourni balfouriana um variegated aurelia and then this one right over here is that um uh, flame violet look at that look at how beautiful the leaves are they remind me of palea plants i'm pretty sure that they are close to the same family if not a palea plant as well they've got some fuzzy leaves i love the texture of the leaves i'm a little bit more adventurous now when it comes to like different types of plants typically i stick to the same plants like my syngoniums my aglonemas but now i am venturing out to different types of plants like this right here i have yet to add phytonia into my plant collection but this one is 
is a ruby red photonia look at how beautiful the red veins are um, these are by costa farms exotic angels these are for 4.97 not a bad price at all but you know what walmart is actually not the most um, cost effective exotic angel sources if you go to um, heb which is a local um, texas grocery store they had some um, costa farms exotic angels for 3.97 literally a dollar less but I mean, Walmart is still a really good price. Like, you know, if you're looking for big box store house plants, Walmart takes the cake when it comes to having the most cost effective plants. I mean, there are still a lot of beautiful house plants here. You can see this is in um, a Monstera, Peru. Look at that. I have yet to add that um, to my collection. I do want to get one by Trending Tropicals, Costa Farms, and those self watering planters. I am a huge fan of self watering planters. I'm so glad that Costa Farms actually converted a lot of their um, Trending Tropicals to self watering just because it takes the guessing game out of watering plants. Like, for instance, a ZZ Raven or Raven ZZ. Um, you definitely don't want to overwater a Raven ZZ or ZZ plants. They will end up getting root rot and die. They actually actually prefer to be on the drier side and then right over here we've got an epipremnum um, arium lemon meringue that is not a global green pothos just because you can tell that the leaves are smaller and they got that yellow um, that neon yellow variegation it's basically a sport variegation from the original global green pothos um, and then we have some monstera adansonia right over here um, it, it's just really hard to show you guys all of these plants because they've got everything mixed up. Um, I wish they would have like merchandised these plants a little bit better. Right over here, we've got a Pachira Aquatica for $14.97. I definitely want to add a money tree to my plant, but if I'm going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and invest in getting a variegated one. I do think money trees are really cute and it just kind of reminds me of like, you know, feng shui or like asian aesthetics i know that a lot of asian households do grow uh, pachira aquatica or money tree just because it's said to bring like money to your household now this is an anthurium that i have come across a couple of times now um, at walmart and if you look at this anthurium it is a very unique one because you can see how dark the leaves are look at how black that leaf is and then even the blooms are a unique like peach orange um, color with some dark um, you know shadows around it this almost reminds me of like a halloween type plant of, of all things but look at how beautiful the leaves are and then you can see that you can actually propagate from this there are a couple of aerial roots i am not sure if i want to spend 14.97 for that anthurium plant foldies watching this video would you buy it I'm already going as broke as I can be buying all of these plants whenever I go to a big box plant shopping video. Like I said, again, I do the daily content every single day for about one hour and I love doing it, but it's one of those things where if I'm surrounded by plants like this hanging basket of Neon Pothos or Epipremnum Arium Neon Pothos, you end up just wanting to spend all your money and there's only so much i can do in terms of like swiping my credit card i definitely don't want to have like such a high bill and on top of that you don't want to have a household where you have so many plants like hundreds of plants but you don't have the time to care for them like i'm already paying the price with some of my plants declining in health just because I haven't been upkeeping in terms like pest control. Like I ended up getting a couple of spider mites and a couple of syngoniums. I had a little thrift outbreak that actually hit one of my really gorgeous aglonemas. So that's the thing about, you know, shopping at big box stores or just plant shopping. You have to really be mindful of how many plants you're bringing in at once at your home because it ends up being more stressful. But you can see right over here, like this is another plant I would totally bring home. This is a philodendron heteraceum, just a regular green one. Love the, um, the heart-shaped leaves of this philodendron. This one, I think, is in the 1987 range, somewhere around there. Um, Costa Farms Exotic Angels Hanging Basket. And then this is one that I would love to add into my collection just because of the green, how uh, lush the green look is. And then I'm gonna go back to this again. Um, for my viewers in Plant Foldies, should I go ahead and buy this Alocasia Nebula? Like this one is just gorgeous and look at how beautiful the stems are. It looks like just, just pure, beautiful 
gorgeousness. Like, look at that. I love how this alocasia looks. I actually like the look of this better than an alocasia silver dragon. I know that we've been seeing a lot of that by Training Tropicals Costa Farms, but this Grower's Bench alocasia is gorgeous. I'm so thankful that Grower's Bench actually has released you know, you know, more unique alocasias. I've always just been really more, I guess, used to seeing like common alocasias like alocasia um, Regal Shields or alocasia California, but even seeing those more uncommon or rare alocasias in a big box store is really exciting. But yeah, this is really um, a big jumbled mess of plants. Like I don't know where to even start in terms of showing you the plants. All I know is there's just a lot of plants to show like this um, staghorn fern right here. Um, I love me some staghorn ferns. I have yet to add one into my collection. I do plan on mounting a staghorn fern on like a wooden plank, something to go put on my walls. I think that would be really cool. Um, I just really don't know where to start um, plant foldies. Normally I would just be able to like show you different types of plants, pick them up, but everything is a jumbled mess right now and I don't know why. Like this one right here is a hidden gem. This is an Epipremnum um, Arium lemon meringue and that one is a super healthy looking plant but it's just underneath the table um i i wish they would have been able to like add some more space to like really um organize the plants when i was here about a month ago their plants were super organized but again this walmart actually must have like restocked the plants like that day or the day before and now it's been about a month and you can see that a lot of the plants have either declined in health or have just been jumbled up um, I, it's just a little bit unfortunate, but this right here is actually a beautiful looking lemon meringue pothos. I ended up getting one as well and mine is doing well. I have it growing under a grow light just because that particular plant will revert back or you won't get nearly as much yellow variegation if it doesn't get that light. And then here is another Hedra Helix guys or a Hedera Helix. This is another English Ivy. This is an English Ivy spear point really like how sharp the um the leaves are and we've got some more anthuriums here now if you go to a walmart i would say they have the best looking anthuriums although this anthurium is starting to decline in health and it's just disappointing and then we also see this growers bench um release this is a cuddly cactus really cute looking cactus it doesn't all, um, actually look real but it is and i do like the terracotta uh, terracotta planter we have there and then i did want to show you this again this is a pretty decent looking philodendron pink princess now i was actually able to get some philodendron pink princess on clearance at walmart for seven dollars i bought three of them and what i plan to do is to plant them in a larger um, planter with a moss pole or some type of pole for them to grow up and we'll see if I can get like a really nice full plant of philodendron pink princess and again I am going to show you this is another um, alocasia nebula I don't know if I want to get this one or the first one that I showed you this one has just has a new leaf unfurl and that's the thing when you guys are buying plants at big box stores a couple of things you need to um, consider is one does the plant look healthy does the plant have browning leaves like this one does it have any type of signs of pests and actually this one is actually for seven dollars that is not bad at all this could be salvageable but i don't know if i necessarily um, am in love with getting a monstera peru even if it is seven dollars i feel like i could get one for a better price it's a little bit healthier but to go back to you know selecting plants at big box stores my tips would be look for signs of pests so signs of pests would be yellowing um tips it could either be um that or just like spider webs like could show spider mites um check the soil to see if it's got some type of like pests and then obviously you want to see new growth if you see new growth on a plant at a big box store that is an added bonus just because you know that the plant is happy and is already established in its planter sometimes you will run into plants that aren't even fully rooted like i've seen it before not as of late where i pulled the plant just to tug on it and it literally was just a propagation versus a fully rooted plant so be on a lookout for that it does happen it doesn't happen often 
Costa Farms is really good about not doing that. And actually Costa Farms is really good about just providing amazing plants like this uh, Monstera Peru, where, you know, these would be considered more uncommon plants. And, you know, I, I had to pull this up. This is probably one of my favorite Calatheas and it's unfortunate because I don't have this Calathea in my collection. Um, I love this Calathea Dottie just because of the, the color of the leaves. Now, if I'm going to buy one of these Calathea Dotties, I think I'm going to convert it to hydroponics. So if anybody um, doesn't know what hydroponics is, it's basically taking the soil out of a plant and just growing it into straight water. Now, it would work very well for Calatheas because Calatheas are a very thirsty plant alongside peace lilies um, and some other plants. Um, they will definitely let you know if they are not happy. Calatheas definitely need to have like moist soil often. Um, it needs to stay, um, you know, moist actually. Now with the pothos plant that I just pulled up, you can actually get away with just under watering it a little bit. But I do want to keep going back to this. So like there's not a lot of plants that I want to show you at this um, Walmart. Unfortunately, this isn't the best Walmart. Their styling and merchandising of the indoor plants is a little bit disappointing. It's just one jumbled up mess and it wasn't like this before. And you can even see this month, um, Majesty Palm. It's already starting to yellow. Um, this is a Diefenbachia that I really do want to add to my collection. I regret not getting it when it was at um, Lowe's on sale for $14.97. Now this one is the Diefenbachia Sparkle and you can see how um, co the contrast of their variegation is. It's a nice looking plant and I am living for it. Now these are some Dracaena Hawaii, um, Fragrance Hawaii. Dracaena are easy to take care of again. They can tolerate lower light conditions. They can tolerate under watering. Um, and they're just really easy to grow plants. Don't overwater them, especially if you have them in like lower light conditions. But overall, I'm gonna pan over here and show you what other self-watering planter plants they have. It looks like they just have a bunch of snake plants. We've got a bromeliad right over here. This is a beautiful looking one. I actually like this bromeliad just because of the white variegation and also just the pink um, color of the blooms. I am going to pan over here again and show you this um, Alocasia cupria. I was able to get the other stem back into the soil. Not sure if this, um, you know, Alocasia cupria will survive. It seems interesting that this um, Alocasia just seems to be a little bit more delicate. Anytime I've seen this plant, whether it's at Home Depot, Walmart, or even Lowe's, it just doesn't look so sturdy. It looks, it doesn't look very hardy. I feel like it's a very delicate looking plant. I don't know if it's just because it's um, in its juvenile form. Maybe if it starts to, you know, mature, it'll be, um, be it'll, it'll just give off that vibe that it's a, a plant that's a little bit more durable. But anyways, those are the indoor plants. I did want to go pan over all of these seeds right over here. It is about to be spring anytime soon. You can actually start growing your seeds indoors so you have a head start. But you know, Flowers that I like to grow um, from seed would be marigolds and zinnias. Zinnias specifically for the um, variegated form of it. There's like a um, zinnia peppermint and I think it's really cool. And then you can see right over here, we've got um, a lot of different bulbs. So a person actually, one of my plant foldies who just joined the chat last night asked if you know anybody grew um, elephant ears from bulbs and the answer is yes and the answer is when you do grow them from bulbs they get extremely huge especially if you grow them outdoors um they do you know surprisingly caladiums um what else caladium bulbs alocasia bulbs um you know which is basically an elephant ear you can actually grow them outdoors in North Dallas. And while they will, um, you know, spring up in the spring, obviously in summer and um, get very large, um, they end up dying back, but they come back next year and they actually end up multiplying. Um, so that's the thing. I like caladiums. I've actually, um, you know, grown caladiums from bulbs. They typically will um, sprout from bulbs when it starts to get hotter. So for me, I would have to wait until like May or maybe later April because it does get hot 
in Texas very quickly to put these bulbs out and then that's how they would um, um, sprout. But like even these dahlias right over here, they've got some of these care tips and just how to start them. So I'm just gonna pan over here. You can pause the video and kind of read what um, the plant care tips and just how to start up these dahlias. I've never grown dahlias from bulbs. I've only seen good dahlia from like actual seeds. So we're gonna see what that um, looks like. But as you can see, I am gonna pan over here and look at all of these other caladiums and dahlias and daisies. Um, they even got begonias of all things, but look at how beautiful that um, flower is. And they've got begonias from tubers. So you know we talk about begonias i've gotten some like rex begonias they've got cane begonias i'm actually considering growing wax begonias and wax begonias are actually seen at like big box stores in the outdoor section i saw a bunch that had like the darker um foliage and the pink um flowers so we will see what that looks like but this is the end of this walmart and now i'm going to go go ahead and go to this walmart this walmart is actually one where i found the philodendron golden crocodile for the first time typically this walmart has some really good plants and i was able to get the seven dollar philodendron um, pink princess on clearance so as you can see night and day difference when it comes to the different walmart um, this walmart has their plants um, spread out they're organized they're organized by like either type of plant or color and you can see right over here we've got a bunch of different um alocasias again even this alocasia cupria looks way better than the alocasia cupria at that one particular walmart um i'm gonna just give that first walmart a pass because typically they have some really good looking plants for some reason maybe they just jumbled up but this walmart i'm very excited to share with you that they have um all of these plants a little bit more organized these are by growers bench um, by wild interiors these alocasia are for $17.97 so I've pretty much got all of the alocasia except the alocasia cupria and then also the alocasia um, nebula I've gotten this one right over here this is a beautiful looking alocasia that's an alocasia pink dragon this is an alocasia ninja I thought this was an alocasia um, black velvet but it is a um, ninja and the way you can tell is the ninja has actually more rounder leaves and look at how beautiful the velvety um texture is on the leaves really like that this is for $17.97 again the plant care tips for alocasia is bright indirect light do not over water and uh, make sure you have preventative care they do um, require a little bit higher humidity so if you have a humidifier in the space that you're growing your alocasia you should do fine and this one is actually really um, compact i really like that and then this is one of my favorite alocasias um, and i've mentioned this before this is an alocasia milo light if you could only touch the texture of the leaves it literally feels like a leather bag really like that as well and it's just surprising that this plant can produce such durable leathery texture on the leaves really nice looking alocasia i had to snag that up and mine is doing very well it's actually pushing out baby alocasia again i want to go do a house plant um shopping tour video or uh not a house shopping <laughs> tour video actually a house plant tour of my actual home but um it's gonna be a minute just because i want to make sure that my house is staged to where i can give you guys a full um tour of my house and my plants but you can see right over here this is another alocasia now i would think this is an alocasia um black velvet but it is listed as an alocasia um, ninja again i'm gonna say this is a black velvet only because it doesn't have the rounder leaves. This one has more narrow leaves. Um, it is a beautiful looking alocasia. The thing about alocasia that I like is if you can get it to establish, um, they um, will grow corms or more baby alocasia that you can separate from the mother plant. That's how you would propagate it. And you can see right over here, this is another alocasia ninja for $17.97. Another alocasia cupria right over here. I do like the color of it. It's got that like maroon, purple, burgundy look. And what else do we have here? Um, as you notice, all of the plants are arranged in the way where they're like similar plants or even the color plants. That does a lot um, does a lot for anybody who's wanting to buy plants. Merchandising, I think, is a very important thing. Like you can see right here, all of the philodendron ring of fires by Growers Bench are next to each other. 
my ring of fire when i got it um about a month ago is a lot larger than these ones so this batch of like ring of fires by growers bench have smaller leaves the variegation is still beautiful nonetheless and this one is for $24.97 they've got a couple at this walmart i've already gotten one so i'm not as um you know interested in that but this is really interesting this is another philodendron um white princess nice variegation i do like the pink and this is for $24.97 as well. Um, my philodendron white princess has better variegation. It, it, it's larger. It looks like this batch of growers bench uh, um, uncommon rare philodendron are a little bit smaller. I'm going to assume all of these plants that we are looking at are TC or what you would call tissue culture plants. And then when somebody asked me what the difference between a tissue culture plant is versus a plant that was like propagated from a node or a seed, um, they are just a little bit weaker in terms of the plant and they're like, I guess their growth um, may not necessarily be as vigorous as a plant that's not tea seed. This one I've never seen before and this one is a philodendron white wizard. So I've seen the philodendron white princess, philodendron white knight, but not the white wizard. Again, I am not 100% sure what the difference between a white wizard is as compared to a white knight. I do know philodendron white princess has the pink as well, but for the philodendron white wizard, is it just um, does it just have like white on its stems? Um, this one right over here is a white knight. For instance, this is not a philodendron white princess because white princess would have a little bit of pink um, lining on its like um, stem. So just a little information that I've learned as I um, look at these plants at big box stores, but you can see there is a lot of space at this location. Um, they pretty much have like an outdoor um, section and then just kind of like a greenhouse section. And then right over here, we are looking at another philodendron white knight. It's called fancy philodendron, but I know this is a philodendron white knight and not, not a white princess. This is for $24.97. Um, I am happy to see that they've restocked these plants. This one is a white princess, and then we have a bunch of philodendron pink princess. Um, I've said this in my previous videos, and I'll say it again. Philodendron pink princess can now be considered a common house plant just because of so many um, philodendron pink princess that are out in the market. Um, you can be actually super selective of what kind of philodendron pink princess you want just because um, the variegation varies. Now with philodendron pink princess, it's the variegation is not influenced by the amount of light you give it. It's actually influenced by the um, plant's original genetics. So if you find a plant like this with really good variegation, most likely it will continue to produce really good um, pink variegation versus some of the other pink princess over there that um, don't have as great of a variegation. I'm going to pull this up again. This is another philodendron um, white wizard. I always wonder why certain leaves unfurl and they are just damaged. I don't know if it's some type of plant pest or what, but I, I've had that happen to my philodendron pink princess and even my white princess so i'm not sure and then you can see right over here this one is a little bit sun stressed this one is a philodendron um ring of fire i do like the variegation of this one specifically but i am curious to see as like a philodendron uh, ring of fire matures will it actually retain that variegation because i saw one that was like super mature at a local plant nursery called rubles and it didn't have nearly as like um contrast on the variegation and then over here, we've got some Begonia Maculata. This is by Trending Tropicals Costa Farms. This one is for $19.84. Um, I am still debating on whether I want to add a uh, Begonia Maculata. I want to get a Begonia that's easy to care for, and I feel like that one would just end up getting very leggy for me. This one is one of my favorite pothos or Epipremnum arium for $19.84. This is a global green pothos. And let me tell you something about global green. Three to four years ago, this was considered a rare pothos. Um, like a one leaf, one node cutting was like $50. And yes, I ended up buying one of those on Etsy. And yes, I still have the original plant that I propagated that from. Um, but it's just really interesting about how plants actually reduce in price if you just wait. You know, it, it depends on like the whole supply and demand. If there's a demand, but there's not a big supply, then um, the plant's value is definitely valued higher. But all of these plants that we're looking at, like this um, Monstera studliana or what they call a Monstera cobra by Costa Farms, 
This was retailing at about $80 or more about a year or two ago and now you can get it at a big box store like Walmart. So it really depends and I think that a lot of these uncommon or rare plants have become more accessible because of tissue culture. I am not an expert about tissue culture, but I will tell you tissue culture is a way to propagate and get a lot of plants with the same type of genetics at a very rapid pace. Um, you can see right here though, this global green pothos is gorgeous. I love the green on green variegation. The thing about global green pothos is you have to give it like a lot of bright and direct light to get that type of variegation. Otherwise it'll start reverting back to green or it'll be more subtle. There is another pothos called a pothos emerald, which is basically a more um, subtle green on green variegation. Now there's nothing subtle about this in terms of just the blooms. Look at how beautiful this anthurium is. Um, all of these blooming anthuriums are gorgeous. I do like the blooms. I do like the pink ones as well, but what I'm more interested on is the foliage. Look at the leaves. Very nice, shiny, almost has like a waxy texture just like a, a succulent but not quite but that is not bad at all i would say walmart has the best pricing for those anthuriums and then we're just going to pass by some of these cacti and succulents and aloe vera this is a really um small um barrel cactus like imagine trying to repot that those um needles are definitely very prickly um, i've been told that most people who re repot cactus like that they use like cooking tongs or something that's very heavy duty gloves and then you can see we've got some more jade plants right here. I just recently made a, a variegated jade plant bonsai. I have yet to start wiring it and styling it. I'm just letting it kind of um, acclimate to its bonsai pot. So if you haven't already, please check out my video from about two to three days ago from this one, and you'll see me um, create a bonsai. You can see this is another jade plant here. Jade plants are easy. They are uh, basically, a, they are a succulent. You just have to make sure you give it bright. Um, full sun and then right over here we are going to start looking at some of these outdoor um, plants like this is some dusty mill miller right here now this is the begonia i'm actually interested in growing i'm going to try to grow it indoors but i will also grow it outdoors because it is a prolific um, bloomer and not only that it is gorgeous in terms of just the 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 actual um, foliage. I like the dark leaves on it and it comes in different sizes and, and not different sizes. It comes in different um, blooms. Like this one is white. I might end up just getting one of each and just seeing how that looks. I remember seeing one actually at the Dallas Fort Worth um, Botanical Gardens and it was actually huge. It was as big, it was probably like three to four feet, but the blooms were absolutely stunning. And so we will see what I have been told Cold and actually did my research these are very versatile plants they can grow in full sun they can tolerate lower light conditions now if you're am i going to grow this indoors it definitely needs to get um you know be under a grow light or um get a lot of bright indirect light like maybe a south facing window and i did want to show you guys more flowers because plant foldies you mentioned how you enjoy seeing flowers as well you can see these are all by better homes and gardens these are all petunias petunias come in different colors and um, patterns i really like this one particularly i don't know what the particular like cultivar name is for this one but what i like about it is just the red and white it almost reminds me of like the japanese flag so i think that that's just really interesting and again I really enjoy things, um, Japanese culture. So you will see me talk about bonsai. You will see me talk about origami. Um, I fold origami paper cranes every single day. Um, my goal is to fold like 1 million paper cranes in my lifetime. Um, and I have been folding them for about seven years. It is interesting though. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it a little bit of a call out. So I have inserted a couple of like quick minute and a half, two minute videos of me folding origami paper cranes. But when I actually viewed the analytics of um, viewers, as soon as like I, I guess show that part of it, a lot of people drop off from viewing. So I'm going to go ahead and refrain from showing that portion. It looks like everybody's just really interested in the plants. I will, um, you know, pepper in a couple of, of origami clips, but I might end up doing that, you know, in the later part of the videos, just because I want to make sure that I keep you guys all engaged. Again, it's very important for me to just show you guys plants like this one right here. This quarter line plant 
is for 584 but this one is already getting all of the beautiful like purple maroon variegation i might actually buy one of these and plant it in like a terracotta planter and grow it out in my back patio or even just out in full sun i'm gonna actually attempt to grow this in full sun um this year um, i am planning on growing some vegetables i ended up putting it down some peas um, that's going to grow on a trellis and some of my zinnia um, flower seeds have already started to um, sprout so i'm excited to share that and then over here we have another bird of paradise white bird of paradise for 584. these are not bad starter plants actually um, a really good size as well you can um you know just repot these and see but as you can see all of these outdoor plants by island blooms which is the accent collection by costa farms this is another dracaena marginata so if you want a cheap dracaena and you don't want to buy like the exotic angels one for three you know in a three inch planter for like 584 um buy yourself one of these these are a little bit larger and it's just interesting that they have all of these in the outdoor section full sun um I will just, you know, I'm curious to see what that looks like for the Dracaena because what I've been told is Dracaena actually um, grow well in even um, darker lighting conditions. Now, I do want to show you these azaleas. So I have been trying to grow these particular azaleas um, at my in my these encore azaleas so encore azaleas are actually azaleas that will at least rebloom three times a year typically azaleas will only bloom once a year and typically that is in the spring but encore azaleas have been bred and um you know it's a cultivar to where they actually rebloom three times a year the problem is i have tried to grow them you know actually in the ground in my landscape and they just have not been able to like either establish in the the ground um the winter ends up killing them i'm surprised that i bought some satsuki azalea which are um you know japanese azaleas from a uh, japanese maple nursery out in fort worth called metro maples it actually survived the winter this year and i'm super excited it is my one of my first successful like full year be able to grow these azaleas because that's something that i want to be able to grow in my my um outdoor landscape I used to grow a bunch of roses. I actually had a variegated rose garden, but unfortunately with roses, as beautiful as they are, they are very much pest prone and they end up getting yellow like leaves. I forget what, what that type of disease is, um, but I ended up having to just get rid of the, the roses. I thought they would be easy if you just grow them in full sun, but they are actually a lot harder um, to grow than you know mo what most people think. I am tempted to get a gardenia plant. So um, I love the, the smell of gardenias. And the fact that I've been able to grow indoor azaleas, I've been have, you know, I got them for about a week now indoors and they're doing very well. I'm curious to see if I can actually grow um, gardenias indoors. So we will see if I end up getting one. I know if I'm gonna buy gardenias, I'm probably gonna buy them either at Walmart or like Kroger or some type of grocery store in the floral section. And you can see right over here, we have a bunch of um, ferns again. This one's for $16.94. Um, I don't really grow fern in my collection just because I feel like ferns require a lot of humidity and they're not as interesting to me. Um, you know, it might be your cup of tea, but especially those types of ferns, it's not really my thing. And we're gonna just look at some more outdoor plants right over here. Um, we are gonna be looking at this hibiscus. Look at how um, the bloom is. I love that orange bloom right over here very beautiful looking one this one's for 1488 um that's not a bad price for a, um a hibiscus again i am from the philippines and my family's from the philippines and we call hibiscus goma mela and they just grow rampant in the philippines they're, they're pretty much considered just a wild type of plant and it's just interesting to see that like this type of um plant is being sold over here in the united states as like um, a tropical like patio type plant um i do like them i've seen variegated hibiscus i've seen some hibiscus that are super colorful um to the point where i might just end up getting one for that particular bloom um that's just a typical red one we've got some more right over here 
And then we got some more of these hanging baskets of these tropical flowers. I like the red blooms on that. I know that it's probably going to require a lot of like direct sun. And then you can see more hibiscus right over here. We've got some geraniums right here. And then we've also got some cyclamen. So cyclamen seem to be very um, common plants to find at any place. You can find them at big box stores, grocery stores, local plant nurseries. Now the health is gonna vary. These ones aren't as healthy. And then I'm gonna show you some marigolds. So a little thing about marigolds is actually marigolds are probably the first flowering plants that have ever grown. I remember growing marigolds from seed and it was when I was a kid, I bought a Happy Meal and the Happy Meal had like a little um, greenhouse type, um, just like a little small greenhouse container with some marigold seeds. I ended up um, sprouting them and growing them. And then when I grew those marigolds, I ended up harvesting a bunch of those um, seeds and I was able to do multiple generations of marigolds. And that was when I was like in elementary school. But look at how beautiful the marigolds are. The thing about marigolds is you definitely don't want to over fertilize it, especially with a fertilizer that has a lot of nitrogen. Otherwise, you're going to end up getting more green leaves versus bloom. So just that's just my suggestion. Um, and then I'm going to look at this right over here. So these geraniums are really cool just because of the leaves. Look at that subtle like variegation on the leaves i just like how plants can have subtleties and sometimes the subtleties are a little bit more elegant and beautiful to look at versus something that's super like in your face in the contrast so that's like you know plants like that for instance would be like crotons where you know it's got those bright colors you may not necessarily want that and i guess that's the same thing with like aglonemas aglonemas have like all of these bright pinks yellows all sorts of different colors but it may not be your cup of tea so i really do like some plants that have that subtle um you know subtle coloration on it. it it's actually very elegant and stunning as well in its own remark some people really like flashy plants i think you should have a balance of both sometimes you want a plant that has all of these colors and these variegations but sometimes you just want to get a statement piece plant that is just green there is something that um, is to be said about green plants. They are more hardy than the typical um, plant with variegation. Although for some reason, I am very guilty of it as well, is I tend to go for plants that have variegation. And I don't know why, because look at this anthurium, like for instance, right here, super green. And then when you talk about common green plants, um, right over here is a cute look looking sago palm. Somebody had asked me how large the sago palm get. I actually put a sago palm down in a landscape and it actually grew and it grew very large. So they can get very large. And then right over here, we have another um, typical golden pothos in a hanging basket. This one's for $10.97, which is not bad. And this one's actually a very um, healthy looking one by Garden Expert. And then this one right over here is another type of Dracaena. This is a Dracaena Hawaii. Um, nice looking green on green variegation. But again, that's what I was gonna say. Green plants or plants that are just green, there's nothing wrong with them. And honestly, I suggest everybody at least having a couple of green plants. We don't always have to go for a plant like this. Like this Diefenbachia has some gorgeous variegation, but then again, um, there is just a little bit more um, requirement in the, in the care tips. Now this one right over here is a very root bound Dracaena um, Janet Compacta. That one is a very classic Dracaena and don't let this one fool you. This plant will actually get very large, but what I like is it does stay compact. And what else do we have over here? We've got some Skindapsis silver and this one is just highly dehydrated. So that's the thing about Skindapsis, their, their leaves curl when they are thirsty and they're a little bit more thirsty than like a pothos plant like this. Um, I am curious though, for anybody um, watching this channel, do you guys grow a bunch of pothos? At one point when I was really collecting plants, I would just be propagating pothos left and right. I remember one time I ended up having maybe like 30 to 40 different propagations of pothos and it's not like I had a lot to do with them. I ended up planting them a bunch of the cuttings actually in a hanging basket which i neglected because i just i end up doing that like that's the thing um, i'm trying to tell everybody as much as you want to love plants and have as many plants in your plant collection you really have to have the 
they care for it otherwise when you neglect it the plant dies and it's not fair to the plant but yes i ended up potting up a bunch of like um, golden pothos cuttings and i had a really lush looking hanging basket and then i just didn't take care of it and then the hanging basket ended up being leggy and then i just ended up having to cut it up again to start over so um, stay tuned for that update and you can talk about like very dramatic plants so this looks like this bathophyllum or peace lily is um, about to die there is a lot of yellow leaves but if you were to water that that thing will perk up as if nothing was wrong and then this one is what i would consider a very good looking um philodendron pink princess in terms of its initial um genetics you can see the stems actually have a lot of variegation as well and i'm just going to pan over here these ones have some pretty um nice pink variegations there are some that have a lot more variegation than other pink princess and that's the thing if you're gonna find pink princess as like a common house plant you might as well be very picky about the variegation because the original genetics of the philodendron pink princess is what is going to dictate whether it's going to have it's going to continue to push out really nice variegation like this I mean, this one's not a bad looking um, philodendron pink princess, but I am so curious, why is it that these leaves unfurl and the tips of it are damaged? Is that like a sign of like a thrifts type situation that, you know, thrifts pests? I'm not sure, but I do want to show you this anthurium. So I like unique looking anthuriums, not just the typical red ones. This one I do like just because it's got those lavender blooms and more so look at how beautiful the leaves are there is a little bit of damage on one of the leaves but i would actually grow these anthuriums not just for the bloom but just necessarily for the green leaves they just have a, nat a natural like shine to them they feel waxy to the touch and you can see the actual bloom is not the pink part of this um, anthurium it's actually this that that little um cone right over there so i think that's really cool and you can see there are the leaves are just very shiny and gorgeous like this one just unfurled i'm gonna wait on trying to buy me an anthurium um if i'm gonna buy one i say this at every video look up shibori anthurium it is a variegated one it, it is studying it's just really expensive like there's one on ebay being sold for 125 and i really can't justify myself to buy a plant like that like if i'm going to buy a plant like that it's going to be some type of like variegated monstera some type of rare philodendron i just i can't see myself buying you know triple digit plant for an ethereum I did want to show you that bromelia. Did you see the unique um, coloration of it? I think that's super cool. And I just like how this Walmart actually did its best to give you a color story. And what I mean by color story is they've got all of the blooming plants together. But not only that, they've got the yellows, the oranges and the reds. They, they're not just mixing like purples and, you know, all of that other stuff. They've got a, a nice color story. And they also have a nice selection of cuddly cactus by um by growers bench for 17.97 that's another cactus i might actually end up putting in my collection we will see um but yeah i just want to pan over here really happy to see this walmart let me know what you guys think about like whether you prefer to shop at a, even at a big box store, even a local plant nursery where they have the plants arranged. Typically, when you go to a local plant nursery, their plants are always going to be arranged by like type of plant and there's just going to be some more organization. But I really do like how this Walmart has spread out their plants. You can see right over here, these Dracaena Masangianas by um, Costa Farms they are all together i love the green on green variegation the only thing about dracaena is i think people don't grow them in their um, household collection just because they give off that vibe that they only grow for like corporate offices dentist offices doctor's offices um that's really what the kind of plants you would see it's the same thing with dracaena and i'm surprised because these you know dracaena is a little bit more difficult to grow they're gorgeous to look at they always look very healthy they're kind of like calatheas where at the store um they look super healthy but then when you bring them home and you don't give them the right care tips they decline very quickly so the thing about dracaena um is or not dracaena i'm sorry diphenbachia i was saying dracaena but these are diphenbachia diphenbachia is um they require bright indirect light 
Um, they are spider mite prone. If you don't give them enough lighting conditions like bright and direct light, they will get leggy very quickly. But you can see that um, Diefenbachia maculata is really gorgeous. I really like the high variegation of this particular one. Um, there are a couple of Diefenbachia I would like to get, like the Diefenbachia sparkle, the Diefenbachia reflector. That one's more of an uncommon rare Diefenbachia. And there's a couple of others. This Diefenbachia maculata, I'm just afraid that I would end up like killing it i've killed one before so i don't know if you know a second attempt would <laughs> actually be better um although i would say after killing 11 um hedera helix or english ivies this last one that i got from cost um, um callaway's nursery which is a local plant nursery in the dallas fort worth area ended up um growing it's still growing no spider mites and it's actually growing new um foliage just like this um zz plant right here I like the regular ZZ plant. I don't have that in my collection. I only have a Raven ZZ. I've got two. I actually have one in my home and one that I brought to work. And then right over here, you know that you can't watch a Grow Folds video without seeing an Aglonema Red Siam. This one is for $14.97. Not a bad looking Aglonema. I might actually end up buying one of these and just converting it into a hydroponic situation. And then this one right over here is in either an Aglonema Maria or an Aglonema Mary Ann. I just wish Costa Farms would just give us a specific plant IDs for these Aglonemas. Um, I would really love it. And actually a lot of their plants as well. That's just, you know, one of my only suggestions with Costa Farms is just giving us specific um, plant IDs for some of these self-watering planters. And then over here we have another Monstera Peru Trending Tropicals for $19.84. Um, that is a plant that I will eventually get in my collection um, or I might just end up getting a couple of cuttings from a friend and propagating it myself. I do like how they have the green next to the lavender purple. That's kind of a cool looking contrast. And the Calathea Dottie right here, there's a bunch of healthy looking ones um, for $14.97 and right over here we have another begonia maculata this one's a little bit more compact um i would actually buy this one because it doesn't seem as leggy that's the thing about begonia maculata it needs to come up it'll it'll grow up like a pole or some type of trellis or stick um it is one of those um begonias that needs support it doesn't really like um have a very compact um growth habit so it can get leggy very quickly but look at how beautiful the polka dots are and then obviously we can't go to a big box store without looking at a skindapsis trubii moonlight i remember this was actually a rare skindapsis about three to four years ago and now you will see that at a typical big box store like walmart um, i am going to pan over here and just continue to guys show you guys all of these beautiful plants so they've got it all spread out and that's the thing about merchandising if you merchandise a plant it's probably going to sell better than having it jumbled up like the first walmart and then this one right here is a monstera adinsonii um the wide leaf form and you can see that there is it's starting a trail you can actually cut that node underneath that node and stick it in water and it will root fairly quickly that's an easy one to root and then we have some more Aglonema red um, Siams right here or Siam Aurora, Auroras. Um, one of the most common Aglonemas, but it's still a beautiful one and easy to care for. And then we have a lot of these beautiful Calathea Dotties. Like look at this one right here. Very um, good looking plant and there's not a lot of damage or even if damage. This one has a little bit on this leaf, but otherwise... If I am gonna, you know, if I were to buy a Calathea a Dottie, I would buy, I would have bought it at this Walmart, but I am not trying to spend any more money on plants. I am really gonna just try to like film videos and show you guys videos right here. So plant foldies, I hope you guys are enjoying this um, installment of just some of the Walmart updates to see if they get any more restocks or what the plants look like. Like these ones, I would say these Calathea Dotties are probably the most healthy looking Calathea Dotties I've seen at a Walmart. And look at the undersides of the leaves are absolutely gorgeous. Now these are for $14.97. I might end up buying one of those again and try to attempt to just grow it in hydroponics. I would like to have like a section in my house where I just display a bunch of like plants that are in bowls. And then right over here we have a Sansevieria or a snake plant. Um, those are common as well. These are for $14.97. 
they're not as easy as people make them out to be. I feel like the watering, if you, you they can get away with under watering, but if you don't water them, they also get dry rot. And then this one right over here is a very large um, bromeliad for $14.97. So if you want a large plant, you can get this bromeliad here. It does have a beautiful like maroon looking bloom. And then we have some more bromeliads here that looks like somebody just spray painted it with red paint. And I am gonna just pan over here and look at all of the other plants again. Um, let me know what you guys think about this Walmart. Do you think this Walmart did um, very well in terms of just merchandising their plants? What do you think about the plants that I've shown so far? Please leave in the comments if there's any other specific plants you would like for me to film or other content that you'd like to see. I am always open for feedback and suggestions just because I wanna give you guys the content you guys wanna watch. Um, as always, I also want to ask, please make sure you guys are hitting the like button, the subscribe button, and make sure you guys have the notification bell because I have attempted to grow, um, you know, this following of plant foldies, but also make sure that we are on schedule. I am trying to get our schedule to where it's either 7 p.m. premieres or 6 p.m. premieres. So we're going to just, um, see what I can do with that. But plant foldies, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video thus far. Um, I'm just going to pan on a couple more plants and then I'm just going to end this shopping video here where you can see those um, Pachira Aquatica are gorgeous. We've got some beautiful Philodendron Pink Princess here. If you haven't gotten a Philodendron Pink Princess this season, now is the time to go to Walmart. They've started to restock again, at least if you live in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And I, I'm glad that I found a Philodendron White wizard but i'm also happy that i didn't um, pull out my credit card to spend 24.97 for that it's one of those philodendron i'm like i already have a lot of plants i don't need to get any more um i will just reassess that as i start to gain more funds again and as always guys um plant foldies thank you again for always tuning into the live premieres there are several of you guys that always are on the premieres like i want to shout out all of you guys but i want to make sure i have a list and i'll see you guys on the next one